What do you see? Lancia Monte Carlo, Fiat X19, Lancia Stratos, Di Tommaso Pantera. It's actually an AC3000 ME, and it was made in England. Well, that one was made in Scotland, but we'll come to that. And it's one of my pinup cars. Because for me, this is exactly how a car should look. Big boxy wide arches, louvres everywhere, mid-engine, aggressive stance. I think it's the child in me. My inner child is just as excited in here as well. You climb into this cockpit, and cockpit is the word. You're surrounded by gauges. You've got this H-pattern gate glimmering at you, waiting to be clinked into gear. You've got that famous AC badge staring at you from the middle of this deep dish racing car steering wheel. It really is a fantastic place to sit. The 3000 ME though, despite all of this, was not a successful car. But then how many motor manufacturers do you know that would get away with a six year delivery time frame? The car was first launched at the 1973 London Motor Show with lucky owners taking delivery of their first cars in 1979. That's like a Tesla. Okay, that's a slightly abridged version of a story which will surely one day make it to the big screen in a motoring disaster movie series which will also include British Leyland and DeLorean. The 3000 ME actually had a fairly hefty leg up into the world at the hands of Peter Bahanna, an engineer who counted Ford's special vehicle operations as part of his CV, working on the body of no less than the Ford GT40. Bahanna met Robin Stables, a former racing mechanic while working at Lola in 1967, and the pair came up with a prototype called the Diablo, which debuted at the 1972 racing car show. That's where this stylish little sports car came to the attention of AC. And it's probably a good job that it did. You see, Bahanna and Stables may have been a dab hand at designing fantastic looking racing cars, but they used the running gear out of an Austin Maxi for their Diablo prototype. Yeah, thankfully, AC did this. And the 3000 was born. Forgive the unimaginative name because the 3000 stands for the capacity of the SX V6 and the ME we have to presume stands for mid-engined and after the wide arches and the louvres those are the two things to love most about this car particularly when you're sat here. In 1984 after a troubled production schedule and a lukewarm reception production of the 3000 along with the license to use the AC name was transferred to a Scottish company based in Glasgow. A few visual developments ensued including body coloured air intakes and louvers as you see here and you might argue that in the 1970s when this car was conceived the design was ahead of its time so that's okay. The biggest change though came after the arrival of former BRM production engineer Aubrey Woods to AC Scotland PLC. Woods replaced the Ford engine and Hewland gearbox with the Alfa Romeo Busso engine. So why then, you ask, am I driving a late model car without the howl of an Alfa V6 behind me? Well, very simply because AC Scotland went into receivership in 1985 before the Mark II updated version of this car could go into production. And perhaps that's not such a bad thing because the mechanical simplicity of an S6 V6 is a beautiful thing. There's something kit car like about this car and it's got a real charm. It feels like you're driving something very special. The wide track, the short wheelbase, it feels very planted. And of course, you've got that power from that engine strapped to the back of you. And of course, if like me, you'd like your cars to look precisely as Hot Wheels intended, then you are driving something very special. The 3000 ME so nearly had a life beyond AC, the assets of the company being rescued and forming the Ecos Car Company, which debuted a radically updated version of the car to be known as the Ecos Signature at the 1988 Birmingham Motor Show. This time, the power plant had been changed to a turbocharged Fiat Twin Cam, but ultimately, the company failed to raise the finance to get the revived project off the ground, signaling the end of the 3000 story. It is always sad to see the end of a motor manufacturer, but in some ways, 
I'm pleased that the later developed versions of the 3000 ME weren't successful. You see, this was designed to be simple and fun. A racing car for the road for people who liked cars. Now, while the racing car body design might have been way ahead of its time in the mid 80s, I think that concept was long gone. Perhaps there's a lesson to be learned there somewhere. Just look at today's roads. Bring back cars like this, please.